Hi there guys, how are you all doing? I hope you're all doing fantastic. Welcome back to yet another episode here on the Brazilian Expat. Now, I know it's been a very long time since I've done any uploads to my channel. I do apologize for that. There is a reason for that and I've just been really busy and I've had some challenges um, just going on here in my business for the last couple of months. And I'm gonna go through all of that. I wanna explain to you exactly what's been going on in my life but I want to do that in the very end of this episode. If you're interested in what's been going on here, then uh, stick around to the very end of the episode. I'll take you through everything that's been going on here. But in the meantime, let's just jump straight ahead into the topic of this video, which is the education system here in Brazil. Now, before I start, just a quick introduction of myself. For those of you who are new to my channel, now my name is Andreas. I'm Norwegian born and moved to the northeastern part of Brazil, very close to the big city of Fortaleza up in the northeastern part of Brazil, where I've lived since October 2005. And I have a small business here, a bed and breakfast that has just been open for just over 10 years now. So the reason why I wanted to make a video, a topic about the education system here in Brazil, the reason for that is currently my mother is visiting me here from Norway and she is a retired English teacher and naturally she's very curious about the education level here in Brazil compared to how it is in the Western world. Of course, she already knew that the level of education here is significantly lower than what we have back in our home country. However, she was very curious to see exactly how a typical middle school day is here in Brazil. Now, before we continue, let's just go over some facts about the Brazilian education system here. So the Brazilian education is basically divided into three main levels. Now you start with the basic education, which includes early childhood education, starting at the age of four, then continuing to primary education and finally lower secondary education. Now the basic education, which is co compulsory here in Brazil, can be divided into two cycles, starting with the Ensino Fundamental, which translates into elementary school, basically. And then you have Ensino Medio, which is basically high school. So after completing high school, the students have the option to further their education by attending either public or private universities. The public universities are considered to be very prestigious and highly competitive to get into. However, the private universities cater to a larger amount of students, but rather vary a lot in terms of the quality of education offered. And then finally, you have your postgraduate education where a master and a doctorate degree may be achieved also. Now, the Brazilian government has implemented several reforms to improve the quality of education here in the last couple of years. However, the sad fact remains that Brazil is seriously struggling with local funding and a shortage of qualified teachers and professors. Also, the level and quality of education that you get varies immensely depending on where you actually live. Now, in the bigger cities, the education level is generally higher as that is where the most qualified teachers tend to live. Also, the local funding tends to be much higher as in the smaller cities and rural areas, funding finding qualified teachers is a real struggle not to mention the lack of infrastructure and the accessibility for students is very limited now as i do live in a small town myself i suggested to my mother that we visit a school just about a 30 minute drive outside of the town where i live just to get an idea of the situation currently is in 2023 so we found a joint primary and middle school literally in the middle of nowhere and we made an appointment with one of the teachers to attend an english class there now i also have to mention that i've uploaded a video earlier about the importance of learning the portuguese language if you ever decide to move to brazil or even visit brazil it's highly recommended just to learn the very basics and the reason for this is just because English is almost virtually non-existent here in Brazil. 
people really struggle with learning the English language. Now, don't get me wrong, there are exceptions, and I know a handful of Brazilians that speak decent English. However, in such a massive country as Brazil, finding someone who speaks basically English is almost like looking for that needle in the haystack, unfortunately. So therefore, it will be interesting to see how the Brazilians are taught English in middle school here, and most importantly, the skill level of the teachers themselves. So we left town just over one o'clock in the afternoon and the drive was about 30 minutes to get to the school. This way we would arrive more or less when the school started just after two o'clock in the afternoon, lasting until six o'clock. And in case you're wondering, yes, a typical school day here only lasts about four hours. So after about 10 minutes out of town, we took a turn into a bumpy brick laid road that would take us further into the interior for an additional 10 minutes before reaching the school. And we arrived right on schedule as the school bus pulled up almost immediately after we had parked our car. Now, the school itself is quite small, not an unexpected as we are in a very rural area. However, upon arriving in the classroom, we were informed by the teachers that the ventilation fans were actually broken. Now, this is not good news as it's over 30 degrees outside. Now, we tried opening some windows in the classroom. However, it just got a little too hot for my mother that is over 70 years of age and not used to this kind of heat. So I suggested to one of the teachers that we move the classroom outside where there was a tree where we could sit in the shade. Now, this was a lot more pleasant and we could continue our English class. Now, to be clear, I wasn't very surprised about the lack of English skills of these students. And it's really not their fault, not at all, because the English teachers barely have basic knowledge of English themselves and their pronunciation is almost impossible to understand. Now, this obviously makes it extremely challenging or rather unlikely to be able to learn any English at all. Again, I have to stress that I am not blaming the teachers either because they are probably the best the city could find and in my honest opinion, it's better than nothing. Now, some of the students knew a few words and tried their utmost to actually have some sort of conversation with my mother. With some patience and a little help translating, we managed to get the ball rolling at least. And in the end, the students would simply ask my mother some questions in Portuguese and I would translate the question in English and she would thereafter respond in English. Now, this is how the class went on for the next couple of hours. After a couple of hours of sitting outside, one of the students actually invited us to his home nearby to the school. Now, he explained that his father had a small vegetable and fruit farm and wanted to show us how life is in the rural part of this area of Brazil. Now, we accepted the offer and started to walk to his home about 20 minutes from the school. Now, after arriving at the house, we were greeted by the family and given a tour of the property. Now, the majority of vegetables grown there were chives, but they also grew a handful of salad and just a bunch of coconuts. Now, there was also a small man-made lake on the property where they pumped out fresh water to irrigate the crops. And it seemed very labor intensive. I, I can only imagine the struggle working all day in the sun and this heat. However, this is what the family has been doing for generations and although it's hard work, they told me it's a good lifestyle regardless. Now, the students were not surprisingly interested in life outside Brazil. Almost all the questions asked were about life in Norway, how snow looks and feels and what sports we enjoy, what kind of food we like to eat and so on. Now, regardless of the huge language barrier, it was actually really refreshing to see just how curious the students were. And they were really polite, always referring to my mother as a teacher and starting and ending the questions with excuse me, please and thank you. 
As I also expected, some of the students were far more forthcoming than other students that were a bit more reserved. Now we tried to conclude everyone, however, it became impossible as a handful of students would virtually take over the class with one question after the other. Now during the tour of the property, the English class also continued. We were talking and asking questions in Portuguese and my mother responding in English. And the students were very eager to show us how everything works from planting the seeds, irrigating and harvesting the crops and where and how the crops were sold. And it was easy to see that they were actually very proud of their parents' occupation and already possessed a deep knowledge of the industry themselves. Now, to me personally, I found it extremely refreshing to see that there is still a generation out there that is still connected to nature with limited access to internet and the social network and sees the world differently, just with, with open eyes. It is so easy to forget the people who bring us the food that we purchase in the supermarkets every single day. Just the hard work that goes into making sure we always have access to all the wonderful vegetables and fruits that we enjoy every single day. Until now, the children I met, they all wanted to become doctors, engineers, teachers, dentists, and so on, which is great, but we need to remember that we also need a generation of fishermen, farmers, plumbers, masonaries, etc. And it was just so refreshing to see that there is a generation that wants to fill these occupations also. So as the day came to an end, I was really left with mixed emotions. On one hand, I do feel like the government could do a lot more. Now it's obvious that the schools need a lot more funding. Four hours of class a day is not nearly enough for a decent education, in my honest opinion. And having a classroom that is over 30 degrees without ventilation is not really not acceptable. Now, on the other hand, the teachers do their utmost to make the most out of what they actually have. Also, the students don't seem to complain as this is just how things are, have been, and probably will continue to be for some time until the government steps up their funding. But the children are some of the most positive individuals that I've ever met. They were just proud to show us their home, their parents' occupation, what they do for a living. And they just had a very positive outlook for the future, regardless of all of the challenges. Now, I think it is very easy for anyone born and raised in a first world country where we not only expect things to work, but we also demand it. Now, after living in Brazil for over 18 years, I do see things differently here. I don't ask merely as many questions as I used to do. I see Brazil for what it is, and I see the people coping with actually what they have. It is an adaptation that has gone on for generations, and we cannot forget that this is the life they know. And I'm almost certain that the Brazilians that complain the most about their own country are Brazilians that already have had the opportunity to travel outside of Brazil to a first world country and have something to compare the way things are here in Brazil to how things are in the Western world. And in the end, it was just a wonderful experience and both my mother and I had a really great time and we met some wonderful children. And I'm only hoping that one day Brazil will step up their game and see the importance of a really good education and give the schools the funding that they actually deserve. But in the meantime, I'm not gonna hold my breath. Now, before I end this video, I promise to give you an update of what's been going on in my life these last couple of months. And what I can tell you is there is a lot to tell. However, I can't really go into detail on absolutely everything that has happened, as that will require its own video, its own episode altogether. Now, what I can tell you is that the business, 
my bed and breakfast is really going great. Business is good. We are in the middle of the high season and we have had guests staying here virtually every day since July. So needless to say, we are very busy, thankfully. Now, the bad news is that we have had some serious issues with the administration. That is, I had to lay off my accountant. Now, what happened here is that he simply neglected to declare some income that we had several years ago. And this was only discovered by the tax authorities just a couple of months ago. Now, this has unfortunately led to not only me owing a lot of taxes, but also having to pay hefty fines and interest on the outstanding taxes owed. And this is also why I have mentioned in an earlier video about the importance of having a trustworthy and competent accountant here, especially if you're a foreigner. Now, it is 100% the accountant's responsibility to make sure that all income is declared. Now, my accountant, obviously, he didn't not declare my income on purpose, but since this is so important and such a great responsibility, I felt that I had no other choice than to lay him off and hire a new accountant. And a deal was made with the tax authorities and a down payment plan was established for the taxes owed. And I intend to pay these off very soon as we had a really good year. And um, I'm pretty sure that I'll be able to pay off everything in just in under a couple of years. Now, apart from owing the taxes, the registration of the business was also suspended until an agreement was made with the tax authorities. And unfortunately, this has led my licenses to actually run the business to expire. So these had to be untamed once again before I could resume business as usual. And of course, all of this takes time. And for all of you who've been following me for a while, you know that I am also in the process of building my own home here at the bed and breakfast. It is a small apartment on top of the existing business and this has also taken up a lot of my time. Now, lastly, as I mentioned, you know, my mother, she came to visit me. She stayed here actually a couple of weeks and unfortunately, her mother being my grandmother passed away while she was here. And that meant that she had to cut her trip short and returned to Norway just a couple of days ago. Now, I myself, I'm also leaving Brazil to attend my grandmother's funeral next week and I will spend Christmas and New Year in Norway before returning home to Brazil in January. Now, needless to say, I've just been too occupied with everything that's been going on these last couple of months just to make any real content for this channel. I know this has been my excuse all the time and Unfortunately, it has just been the sad reality of it all. Maybe I have bitten over more than, than I can chew or swallow or however this expression goes, but I'm pretty sure you guys know what I'm talking about. But anyways, I do remain positive that things will fall into place sooner or later and that I will eventually find the time to settle down and start making some more and better content. I hope you enjoyed this very small episode this video regardless and if you did a thumbs up is always appreciated and until the next time guys happy travels stay safe guys and hopefully i'll see you down here in this wonderful wonderful part of the world that is brazil so until the next time take care guys bye bye ciao ciao